This was an interaction I had in an Uber ride this past weekend. So I had a friend in town and we went out on Saturday night in West Hollywood for dinner and we called an Uber home at about 10.30 p.m. And we get in the Uber and it's a female Uber driver. We're five, 10 minutes into the ride and this Uber driver turns around and says, can I ask you girls something that's been on my mind for the past few hours and I, I need some advice about it? Now you Usually you go, uh, oh, you could let me off here and I'll call another Uber. But uh, she seemed, you know, she seemed chill. So we said, sure. And she said, well, I did a ride earlier tonight, like two hours before, so around 8, 8.30 p.m. on Saturday. And she said, it was these three guys and one blonde girl and I took them to this random address in Beverly Hills. And she said, the girl in the back seat looked to me like she was unconscious. And again, she was with these three guys. And the Uber driver said, you know, I, I asked the guys, you know, what's going on? Is the girl OK? And apparently the guy said to her, oh, yeah, she's just tired. But then the Uber driver said to us that this girl had her head against the window and she said she didn't look tired. She looked unconscious. But the guys, you know, insisted that that she was tired. They were calling people like you got to, you know, come to this address or this party, whatever. And so this Uber driver is telling us what should what should I have done? I didn't I didn't quite know what to do. She took a screenshot of the address in Beverly Hills, but she said, I've just been thinking about it for a, f- a few hours and I, and I don't know what to do. And, you know, we, we cut in and we said, well, it doesn't quite make sense that someone would be so tired on a, you know, Saturday night at 8 p.m. where she can't, you know, speak up. Maybe she was asleep, but it didn't. The Uber driver maintained it didn't look like she was asleep. It looked like she was unconscious. So anyway, my friend and I encouraged this Uber driver to call the police. She did on in the car with us. She called the police and she gave uh, the police the address. But what made an impression on me is that this Uber driver in telling us this story said, it just didn't feel right to me. There was something off. But then at the same time, this Uber driver was saying, but I didn't do anything because maybe this blonde girl was just tired or maybe one of the guys with her was her boyfriend. But then the the driver kept going, no, but it, it just, it didn't feel right to me. So I'm going to pause there and then I'm going to tell you quickly about another conversation I had with a friend because there's a link. Recently, I was on the phone with with one of my best friends who's very, uh, God bless her, she's very open-minded, sometimes too open-minded, but very open-minded. And we were talking about kids who don't feel like their gender in this big push of so-called gender-affirming care. And this friend said to me, you know, Julie, I agree with you that, you know, it's probably too young at 13 or 14 to give a child puberty blockers. But this friend said to me, what if a 13 year old is so miserable? And what if they so don't feel right in their bodies? And the one thing that would make that 13 year old less miserable is if they were called by a different name or different pronouns or if they were given puberty blockers. Why would we deny them that? And so as I was in this Uber with this woman who was saying to me, I didn't call the police with this unconscious girl because although it didn't feel right to me, I, you know, didn't want to be wrong in case the situation was benign. I thought of my conversation with my friend about gender affirming care and I saw a link, which is that we have lost our moral gut as a society. We have lost it. This to me is the consequence of consider all sides culture just going too far. We have so much moral policing and so many people go, well, what if, what if a child really is miserable? And what if there is an exception? And what if we need to affirm their gender? Oh, what if the, you know, person in the, the Uber was really just tired and it was so innocuous. We have all these voices in our head because of this intense moral policing culture that we live in, that we kind of have moral paralysis as a result. We're so afraid of saying or doing something wrong that we forget to do what is right. You know, we, and this is what I said to the Uber driver, hopefully kindly, you know, I said, 
you know, with all due respect, you need to trust your moral gut. You kept saying over and over that you felt like it was wrong. It didn't make sense that a blonde girl would be in an Uber with these three guys. She looks passed out. It's a Saturday night at 8 p.m. She can't speak for herself. You knew that that didn't feel right. You've got to trust your gut. Just as when I was talking with my friend about this gender affirming care thing, I said, wait a minute, we can sit here and, you know, go through every possible exception. We can, you know, do a cross section, multiple checked statistical analysis of, you know, if the situation is right. We have to go back to our impulses and our gut as human beings. And we know on a visceral level that giving puberty blockers to a 13 year old is wrong. Just as we know on a visceral level that a girl passed out in the back seat is probably in a bad situation, but we've lost that sense. So anyway, that's, that's something I wanted to bring up. Yep. <laughs> I'm like calling on him. Like a, we're in school. Yes, Sean. Polarization is paralyzation. Yes. 